Big Ed here. Today we are going to be talking about the Leopold VX1 3x9 with a 40 millimeter objective. Um, I just purchased this scope for a hunting rifle of mine, a uh, Remington 700 30 odd 6 in stainless steel. And I believe this is the third, let's see, yeah, this is the third 3x9 power scope I have bought. Um, this is basically what it's come with. It came with a kind of this, I would call it a bikini cover right here. It's just a, a rubberized, you know, two end caps, stretch it out over your scope. Um, and it came with a, a Leopold sticker right here. Came with your warranty card right here. Join, uh, actually, no, that's your, uh, join the NRA card. And then it came with your instruction manual right here. And also, you know, your little foam inserts for uh, packaging to make sure the scope stays safe in here. I'm really impressed. I, I like kind of what I've noticed is the more inexpensive scopes usually come with lens covers or these bikini covers. And the more expensive scopes do not. You have to buy like the Butler Creek separately, which is kind of annoying. So I'm really happy it came with these. See, these are great and, and they do what exactly what they need. They'll provide cushioning and they'll protect the lenses and keep water and uh, dust and fingerprints off of them. <clears throat> So we're basically done with, with the box right there, and it's pretty simple. You can see it right there. It is, uh, yeah, matte finish, you know, so it's, it won't reflect light. You know, you won't get shine. Um, it's a duplex reticle, which is just real simple crosshairs that are finer in the middle. Um, and then three, a three by nine by 40 VX1. And I would call this scope right here is basically an entry level quality scope. Um, you know, you can get Tascos, True Glows, the Simmons, you know, there's plenty of cheap scopes out there, the Bushnells, you know, the bottom of the line Bushnells, you can get nice Bushnells also, you know, basically if you can get a bunch of scopes, 30, 40, 50 bucks, those I say, those are all budget junkers. Um, and this scope like this is basically, uh, you know, an entry level um, quality scope right here. And, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's really, it's a hunting scope. And that's what it's designed for. And it's a hunting scope. You know, the magnification is pretty perfect for, uh, you know, New England area here. Um, because you can put it all the way down to a three power. And then you can see it goes in, you know, increments. You know, and then you can twist it all the way up to the nine power right here. And the other nice thing about it is it's real sleek and simple. There's, you know, there's not a lot of buttons on this thing. You know, you're going to have your, your focus for your eyepiece, you know, your, your magnification setting. And then your turrets right here. And the turrets just have little caps on them right here for, for zeroing right there. And you can see that's pretty easy. You know, there's your vertical. Twist it to the right, it's going to go up and you can hear the little clicks. One click equals a quarter MOA. You know, that's pretty, pretty standard. And this would be something, I mean, you know, that's a nice enough where you could dial it in the field. But a scope like this, in my eyes, it's made to be, you know, made on top of your three, you know, whatever hunting rifle you have. And you zero it, you know, at 100 yards and then you use it. Or else you could zero it at 200 or zero it at 50. Depends, you know, your area and how wooded it is. If you're hunting in the fields, you might want to zero it for 200 yards, you know. And then just hold, do a hold down at 100. And basically a scope like this, I would just basically run holdovers, you know, or hold down depending on where you zero it. But, you know, it's going to be smooth. It's going to be snag free um, and very, you know, it's going to be pretty robust, robust for what it is. Um, the, the other thing I liked about this scope too is uh, looking through this scope, it's really clear when you get your eye relief. It's, it, you know, you have a little bit of a uh, little get, you know, there's a little get wiggle room in there with your eye relief. I forget what it, exactly it is, but when you, when you, with the, with the eye relief, the scope almost, the exterior of the scope, this is, these Leopolds are so bright as you can see right there. The scope itself almost just disappears, the ring of the scope, and it's really actually a pleasure to look through these Leopolds. Um, they, de they definitely are, you know, for, for the money. And, you know, with the proper eye relief, it's, you know, you're basically almost just looking, you know, at the glass and there's none of this metal and stuff, and it's really a nice, bright, clear image of this scope. And... I, I enjoyed that a lot, and there are other scopes, you know, that are definitely going to be similar to this. You know, Nikon's are going to be very comparable to these, uh, the Redfields, you know, which is owned by Leopold. Those are made in the United States. This scope is made in Japan. Um, the other ones, uh, Bush, uh, Burris, 
those are those are nice and going to be very similar to these burr scopes i liked a lot too but i got a good deal on these scope and these scopes basically list at walmart and you know most online retailers for about 225 is the number on these this scope was on sale at dick sporting goods and i had 20 dollars worth of coupons so I, I walked out with this scope right here for for $180, which I was really happy with. So with a brand new Leopold uh, three, three by nine, you know, by 40, and I, I was really excited. So, you know, it's pretty cut and dry, no frills. You know, you could probably, you know, it looks like there's some threads here at the end of the, op, you know, of your objective. You could put a, uh, you know, sunshade on there. These scopes are similar in the U.S., but all the glass in these are all grind in Japan. Um, that's pretty much where all, most glass from most scopes is coming these days. Unless you get some real, you know, high-end ones, um, you know, like some of the Schmidt and Benders, some of the IOR, IOR Valdadas, um, what other, uh, the U.S. Optics, those are made in U.S., so Redfields, those are ground in the United States. <clears throat> and there are some scopes that, that get their... Uh, their glass from you know but most of it's all ground in Japan now and that's basically what this scope is this is a entry-level quality hunting scope right here and uh, you know you can probably get the scope with different reticles right here and the other thing you could probably use with this scope for that I've actually thought of but it is light I don't know the exact weight on it but you know it's an aluminum bodied scope it does not weigh a lot you know my, my thought of putting this on an AR would be to zero the AR you know anywhere from 50 to 200 yards and just use holdovers and that's what a lot of the guys are using anyway with the red dots you know they'll mount a red dot on there zero it for 50 and then use their formulas for the holdovers for uh, you know, uh, you know, for 100 yards, for 150, for 200 yards, 250 yards. You know, out past that, you're going to be guessing where you're where, where really guessing where your bullet's going to be going. And also, if you wanted to, it's not impossible to remove these caps. You know, as we just saw, you know, and and, and spin dials, and you know, try to try to get an accurate setting out there. But I like this scope, and it's really clean. You know, it would have been optimal choice, but the quality of the glass and uh, you know, the bang for the buck with this scope wanted a good entry level scope because as soon as you start getting into a mil radians you know and those big tactical knobs you're at least looking at a minimum of three hundred dollar scope you know and these can be had used for less on on, on ebay and uh you know leopold's definitely a good quality optic and um you know i'm really excited to uh, own this scope and my goal with this rifle right here was to keep it light i'm pretty good at building big heavy guns buying heavy guns and going for heavy barrels and bipods and you know steel rings and bases and so these are just some simple picatinny bases on here and we're going to just keep this real light and we're going to mount it with aluminum rings up here we, we, you know this rifle is not going to be heavy and it's just going to be a hunting rifle and uh, i really don't have one of those yet in a center wire caliber everything i've built up is really a target long range target configuration so that's ex this is a perfect mating and you know i'm definitely not the first person to put a vx1 onto a uh, remington 700 and a 30 out six caliber you know, or another common hunt, you know, hunting caliber, you know, whether it be long or short action, but, you know, we're going to go ahead and we're going to work it. So I have a hunting rifle and uh, let my brother use it too. He's interested in hunting. So, you know, that's basically it. But uh, I want to thank you guys for uh, watching. And if you like this video, uh, please give me a thumbs up and, you know, don't hesitate to subscribe. I appreciate the, uh, you know, and, and, you know, let me know what to make in the future. You know, keep the, I'll keep the good videos coming, but thanks for watching folks.